lost complete and total control. Lives lost and homes torn apart. I told her I'm not moving. I want to see my mom and, you know, go to her when she comes. Rescues, then recovery, still a month after devastating floods in Austin. Tonight, how you can help the flood survivors. The Austin Flood Giveathon, right here in our studio. But first, a KXA an investigation into the emergency response in the hours after that disaster. After deadly floods more than a decade ago, the city of Austin put a lot of money and some of the best water measurement tools in the nation. But this recent round of flooding knocked out some valuable equipment. And KXA and investigator Robert Maxwell tells us some are now questioning whether officials have the right tools in the right places to predict how severe the next flood will be. Well, the short answer, Robert and Leslie, to that is no, not after what happened. One of the key tools used for vital flood information are water height gauges. During the floods about a month ago, two gauges in Travis County stopped working. One was at Twin Creeks near Buta here, the other one up near, near US 183. But we discovered some low-tech heroics last month that might have prevented more lives from being lost. Milton Sundvison has worked rainstorms for the U.S. Geological Survey for 20 years, but the storm that hammered the Onion Creek watershed. We've never had a measurement that high. It's never been that high. And the timing could not have been worse for two USGS water gauges to stop working. On the 183 gauge that morning, this USGS water flow graph shows the gap in the data first appeared with the creek well on its way to cresting. To get the critical water height data back to the city of Austin, USGS crews had to measure how fast the water was rising manually. When you're in a flood, you don't have time to go through and troubleshoot to say, you know, hey, what's going on here? From a perch atop the 183 bridge, they lowered a wired weight to the top of the rushing water. They even timed the readings to avoid floating debris that surely would have swept it away. Every 15 minutes, crews texted the info back to the city of Austin and National Weather Service, all of it vital to helping emergency responders know where to send help to people clinging to fast shrinking rooftops, even to trees. How do you describe them? You know, heroes, you know, they're, 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 do, they're doing their job. I don't know if they would consider themselves heroes. Rescue units. But some lives were still lost, lives uprooted. But human suffering, I mean, it's hard to put a monetary value on it. And now, Travis County Judge Sam Bisco questions whether there's a will to invest in technology now to better help predict the next damaging storm. The only technology that was available washed away. So we should put ourselves in a position where that doesn't happen in the future. Is that even possible? Inside the city of Austin's flood early warning system, KXAN was given a look at an impressive array of equipment. It's designed to analyze weather patterns, rainfall amounts, and stream flows from those water gauges. But they were all tied to real-time information. Flood experts admit for several hours October 31st, they were flying blind. We just don't know how much it's going to rise. We can't predict how high it's. We didn't, can't predict 41 feet or 40.2 feet unless we have that that ability to have the models do the predictions. And even the best computer models are limited to likely scenarios, sometimes incorporating historic data. These experts say once a storm arrives, the only defense against being completely helpless is a good real-time offense, boots on the ground. We have people on the ground who can help, who can help tell us what's happening. I mean, it, it's not a helpless feeling because you can't give a prediction, but because we're, we have people there that are doing as, as much as they, can, as they can right at that moment. And Robert, we understand Travis County's emergency operations staff is uh, compiling what they're calling an after-action report. Sure, they've been gathering information from EMS, fire, uh, police, all the different agencies. That we are expecting uh, not too long from now, but what we expect to hear in it, of course, is how the county and city responded. Mm -hmm. More importantly, though, we're expecting to hear as well possible recommendations on buying more flood gauges, more resources to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again, especially in some of the smaller communities. And any idea when we should see that report? Uh, it is a good question. The fact is, we don't know right now. They're still compiling the information. And what with the holidays, we could see, for example, something out by the end of December, maybe early 2014. We'll keep following it. Robert, thanks. Well, your tax dollars pay for one of the gauges that got washed away. We checked, and the city of Austin is paying the U.S. Geological Survey more than $15,000 this year to maintain that gauge along Onion Creek at Twin Creeks Road. The other gauge that quit operating is paid for by the USGS. And I understand they operate more than 500 of these gauges across the state, Jim. They do, Leslie. It's really fascinating to see how it works. What you see here is positioned underwater. 
where this gas line is constantly forcing out small amounts of air through what is called a bubbler. And based on how much pressure it takes to force that air out, you can derive the depth of the water above the sensor.